If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. That's all living well, isn't it? Being happy. Living well and being happy is what it's all about. So I want to share with you the four dimensions of living well today. It's four dimensions that I discovered in my time of uh, being a speaker, of being a person, being alive. And uh, have some fun with that. Well, before I start, though, folks, I would like to dedicate this time to the caregivers out there, and particularly my Uncle Jim, who is my caregiver for my Aunt Polly. And the caregivers uh, have the biggest heart of compassion I've ever met. I want to honor the caregivers amongst us today. I want to honor the folks that have partners like myself and my Aunt Polly, because my Aunt Polly is a great inspiration for me. She's a, a woman of grace and a woman of great, great wisdom and great courage. I want to honor the folks that are out there living with Parkinson's and the caregivers with them, and also the professionals that back them up and, and believe that there's a, a, a great way, a, be, a better way to go forward with this uh, disease in our lives and to be a little more compassionate and hopefully keep a, a sense of hope out there for something that might change in the future, possibly within our lifetime. And according to Michael Jackson, Jackson Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I get that? Yeah. Michael J. Fox. With apologies to Michael J. Fox, uh, within uh, the next nine, eight to nine years, he's predicting some major changes. So it's exciting to think about the possibilities of where we can go. So to start off with, I want to share with you some thoughts and ideas around the four dimensions of living well. There are four areas that we derive, if you will, energy and juice for our lives. And I want to celebrate those and tell a couple of stories, do a couple of activities with you, maybe and have a little bit of fun and, uh, and uh, just freshen your imagination, if you will, to uh, think of those things. And uh, whether you're well or not well, it'll be about living the best you can live in this context. So the first dimension of energy is the physical dimension. Now, I should actually share with you all the, the dimensions that we're aware of. There's the physical dimensions, the body, okay? So how your body gets along with yourself in terms of living well physically. There's the second dimension of, in, of living well is the emotional dimension. Now I could talk about happy, sad, mad, and glad, because those are the four big ones, right? All the others are subsets of that. But I'm not going to talk about happy, sad, and mad or glad because I want to go a little bit deeper with the emotional dimension of energy. It's, uh, it's a little bit more interdependent, it's more of a, an in interdependent web of life. The third dimension of living well is the mental energy, the mental dimension of living well, and that talks about worry, guilt, and fear. Those are the three great big <laughs> ways that we suck our energy out of our lives with worry, guilt, and with fear. So I want to share with you some thoughts and ideas about overcoming that and getting back to the fourth dimension of living well, which is, of course, the spirit's dimension. And that entire dimension is dedicated to caregivers. Because the spiritual dimension, I could talk about church, mosque, and synagogue, because we do get juice, we get meaning, we get life, lifelong lessons for life, living out of the, uh, our connection spiritually through religion. But I really want to talk more about uh, where the, um, we're connected to something greater than ourselves. So when we, we, we live well, we connect to something bigger than us. And I look over and see the board here, and, and they're a living example of a spiritual dimension because they're connecting to something bigger than themselves. They're on the board to help an organization do good work in the community. So that's already a gift of service. So I, I honor that with the, having the board here today. So true or false? It ain't the mountain ahead of you that wears you up with that green and sand in your shoe. That's true, isn't that? It's not the big stuff. We can take on the big stuff. We've had, we've had diagnosis and all kinds of stuff. But it's those little things that, that nickel away at us and trying to wear us down, if you will. So I want to start off with the, so the physical dimension of energy by asking you a question. If you'd be so kind to pair up with someone that you're sitting with and, and ask them this question. Listen very carefully for the answer. And then when they have the answer, uh, ask the question back to each other and learn the answer to this question. I'd like to just celebrate the physical dimension of energy by talking a little bit about our bodies. So here's my question to you. What's your favorite body part and why? Oh, I should say, on your body. <laughs> uh, just your body, okay? What's your favorite body part and why? One minute, start now. The person went now, we have a person there, ask them now. Okay, I've well, got time for three. Can you share three? Hands up high. Pretend we're in grade school, hands up high. How would you like to share? What's your favorite body part, sir? My favorite body part is my brain. Oh, that's a good answer. That's conference. His favorite body part is the brain. Makes it work. Makes it work. Thank you for that. And why is it your favorite body part? That's something that keeps me going. Keeps you going. Snap, snap, snap. I like this guy. 
That's great, thank you, thank you. The brain, of course. What are any other body parts? That's it? Oh yes, please. My hands. Your hands, tell us about your hands. What's one thing that you love to do with your hands? Play golf. Playing golf. <laughs> oh, getting out there in the old crack of the whip and getting the irons out there and getting the ball on the green. Yeah, that's, that's lots of fun, isn't it? One more. Time for one more. Yes, please, at the back. My eyes. Your eyes. Tell us about your eyes. I'm a good watcher. I still don't live. I don't watch very much because my eyes are so good. So you bird watch without binoculars. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and the beauty. That's great. That's wonderful. So the physical dimension, thank you for sharing, folks. And of course, there's more. I'm sure you talk about some more, and I hope you kept it clean. <laughs> the, uh, the celebration of the physical dimension is to take care of those body parts, and to take care of the brain the best you can, do all the exercise and stuff like that. And it, it, it's the, the main reason to do that is to take, to be, to take care of your stress. You know, if the body is stressed out, if the mind is stressed out, if the emotions are stressful, if you're, if you're all stressed out, it has an effect on your physiology. In fact, if, you, if you're stressed out enough, it'll actually change the way you see things. And you'll actually, well, let, let me give you a test. I know we're at a conference, we're having a fun day, and fun, having a fun evening, but I want to give a test. And particularly for the caregivers, have a quick look at this test. It's a stress test. Because sometimes caregiving can be very stressful. There's a lot of demands, and I know the big-hearted caregivers that, that I know, for example, give and give and give and give, and sometimes they're not so good about taking a break. Sometimes it's good to take a break and relax and do something for yourself. So I, I'm going to give you a stress test. It's from London College Hospital, and it, what it is, it's two dolphins jumping out of the water. And they've researched when you're under duress or stress, you actually start to get headaches and stuff, and the headaches can change the way you look at things. So I'm going to give you the sample on the board here. If you see one little difference, you're a little bit stressed out. If you see two or more differences, you're moderately stressed out. If you see three or more differences, you're maximum stressed out. And I'll personally write a letter to your, to your family so you can stay in the hotel here for another week. Okay? <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to do a show of hands. Let's just see if you're stressed out or not. So here's your stress test. You ready? <laughs> How are you doing? You okay? You in the right place? You in the right place? Okay. I know some of you are probably pretty calm, but if you see one or two differences here, you're, you're in the right place, okay? So I want to share that. If it were so easy, if it were so easy to be a glowworm, folks, we could catch our stress and take care of our physical self before we get too far along. This is a great little tune I'm going to sing along for you. I wish I was a glowworm, my glowworm's never glowing, because how can you be grumpy when the sun shines out your bum? <laughs> now, when you see Mary on Monday morning, you say, Mary, you had a good weekend. You're glowing, girl. You're glowing, girl. And poor old Barb over there, man, you're burned out, baby. You're burned out. Take, you should take some time off. If it was so easy, we could do that. But of course, it's not that easy. We have to be very mindful, be very aware of our stress levels, and take care of ourselves. And that's really important to take care of ourselves, no matter what you're dealing with. So I want to share with some thoughts and ideas. Very simple diet, exercise, sleep. Diet advice is very simple. Have five colors, drink lots of wine, have dark chocolate. I'm done. <laughs> Exercise, very simple, simple, very simple premises, you know, with, especially with Parkinson's, exercise is extremely important. So my little mantra, you know how Nike has its little slogan? I have one too I want to share with you. It's called move it or lose it. <laughs> move it or lose it. Now, oh to be so nimble. Oh to be so nimble at whatever age she is, right? Oh to be so nimble. And of course, the last one, diet, exercise, and sleep. I love this, this, uh, this um, quote by the great bard himself, William Shakespeare, because we, we spend a third of our life asleep, folks. A third of our life. We spend a third of our life asleep. Average life, a lifespan, that's 26 years asleep or trying to get to sleep. We, there's nothing we do more of. We spend 26 years asleep. We spend 40 hours a week by 30 years on working, and apparently we spend about six months of our life looking for lost socks as well. <laughs> but, th but this is 26 full years of sleep, so get some sleep. Now there's a little hand I'm going to give you. On the back of it, if you'd like, is a free complimenting sleep wake up happy guide. Feel free to go there and download it for yourself. It's a wake up happy guide. It's uh, how to get to sleep, stay asleep, and get up in the morning with a little bounce in your step. So here's what he says. Sleep that knits up the rattle of sleep of care. The death of each day's life. Sore labors back. Isn't that cool? Balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher, and life's feast. No wonder he became famous, and so we sort of keep quoting him. 
because he's got some good stuff to say.